who would like to ask Joy any questions? Mm -hmm. I wondered if, if you could uh, explain again the difference between individual rice and sticky rice so that everyone understands. Thank you, right? Yeah, and especially, like, I didn't know until I came to the state, there are so many kinds of rice. Mm -hmm. But because I was always eating sticky rice, uh -huh. and we have more sticky rice that last week we had the sticky rice cake is made of a sweet sticky rice. It's more sticky. So, and that represents Korean culture. Uh, Korean is pretty much group oriented and like a very hangout and very caring and but that means very sticky. But uh, but I found it when I hear that people are eating different kind of rice. But they're, the most of the rice when you are eating from Mexican culture is not sticky. They are very individual. So seems like it's it, it is interesting to find the food is representing our characters of our cultures. So that's why I'm saying kind of individual, sometimes singularly understand but sometimes it's so sticky so it depends on the where do where 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 which culture you are from what kind of food you are from, what kind of food you are eating so but I would like to talk about Korean culture is very sticky because of we are eating sticky rice <laughs> and it's very delicious <laughs> so any questions yeah. are, are there uh, to your knowledge is there much uh, any such women's groupings now that would be, you know, would meet the standard of a sticky rice community where women can um, talk about their experiences of oppression and support each other to overcome them? Um, I think this, uh, um, right now, right now we have a lot of Korean women pastors and so passionate to work for women and also for the church. and. Uh, I, I know there are so many different kind of different locations and their women are shaping the group but uh, recently I would like to introduce um, now we have two representatives who is creating and supporting women the ministry and Dr. Uh, Reverend Krishna Kang. Uh, Hello. Uh, Hello. Welcome. And she's also teaching at Fuller uh, Leadership and um, different Korean seminaries and also she's, she has a passion for missions so she goes to the mission field so many times in a year so she's a, like itinerary uh, teaching scholars and ministers and we have a, a Dr. Catherine An. Uh, she's also a daily pastor and then she's a director for the Center for Women in Min uh, Mission and Ministries and she WMM, and she has been cre she created uh, the 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 women support supporting um, group for women in ministry and missions five years ago, and she's still working on that. Yeah, so we would like to create more a supportive environment um, uh, for women in the ministry and try to transform the church, Korean churches. So we are kind of listening and sharing the experiences. The difficulties in our uh, in the ministry of uh, working with the Korean churches right now. Well, just to add, ask for a bit more. Okay. Okay. So you have these two people here in yeah. the United States, but what about in Korea? Mm -hmm. How do you get your influence back to Korea? So I think that's the question because Korean is a pretty uh, education-oriented societies, and um, we need to um, have uh, scholars who will influence um, the Korean churches and society and also like somebody who has a kind of um, reputation to be influential and talking about this issue because this is very sensitive issues even who has a reputation to talk about oppression against women and the culture is not easy even so now mm -hmm. we, I think so creating the solidarity group and find a uh, safe channel to talk about this issue in Korean churches in Korea. So that's our future task. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, they are doing it and you know, it's kind of, yeah, try to talk about these issues more, but it takes time, I think, you know. And do you have any suggestion, Dr. Shinokan? Well, I think that 
because she has been uh, she has been visiting Korea and Korean churches a lot, and maybe she has one suggestion or maybe she has an experience. Later on. <laughs> later on. Okay, just later on. So invite her in the future, <laughs> so you can listen to her. Knowing how serious this oppression was and is, I was just awed by a group of uh, Korean Presbyterian women in the largest Presbyterian church who were uh, theologically trained and were doing a lot of the functions of ministry already in the 80s, but of course had no status and uh, almost no pay and you know, were treated really very badly. But they came together over a period of about 20 years and brought about the ordination fairly recently, four or five years ago, in that biggest Korean Presbyterian church. But I was so impressed at the cleverness with which they uh, analyzed their situation and, um, and the structures that they would have to influence and the way they worked together to develop educational programs um, you know, to reach the pastors and the elders in very clever ways. Uh, and they held together in, in just wonderful solidarity. It took them 20 years or so, but um, they had such a wonderful feeling of solidarity and strength, uh, even as they knew they were confronting these very serious obstacles. So I was very impressed at and how effective that community was, even though it was a slow task. Thank you, thank you for sharing. And actually, as I shared at uh, part of my presentation, now nowadays the women's status is very lifted, actually. So and women lifted, 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 and but church has not changed that much in the structure, mm -hmm. but but there's the heat, the heat of passion of women working very well. So that's uh, another way, but we would like to more like, uh, and some, there's some uh, scholars, feminist scholars are gathering as a solidarity group. I, I suggested on my book that there's uh, several kind of good, uh, they are shape, uh, lifting and supporting the solidarity group as uh, and try to influence Korean churches and not only Korean churches, also the diverse communities. So, but I think you know in Korea there is a lot of women's group. I see we have passion, but we would like to talk about more about constructive way to influence, to lift them out. Not only only the emotional or to some energy, but also actual status, like a social position and church position. So. I think we need to. Uh, uh, still, we have to talk, uh, talk about more about that. So, so I think um, we need to make a voice, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are ready for that. Okay. So, um, uh, I'm trying to uh, make sure that what I understood. Uh, I thought as you started your presentation, maybe you said that. Uh, the discrimination uh, wasn't uh, wasn't a problem anymore. I can't quite remember what your sen sentence was. So I'm understanding then that maybe you were talking about legal discrimination um, because it seems to me that then you went on to give us examples of how discrimination does work in the system and is supported by the system. So I wasn't did I misunderstand your first sentence about discrimination? The discrimination is um, not a, the, the systemic discrimination is always existing, but myself is uh, more aware of the culture in general, the uh, discriminating women, like using the languages. So people, because we kind of grow up in the oppressive society, in a traditional mm -hmm. way. And then the language and attitude of the people's ideologies, yes. they're thinking and mm -hmm. talking, oh, they are judging women is supposed to be here and there. And right. it's hard to accept something else. Or, and, and what about legally? So legally, like, uh, legally means it's kind of complicated because
because we have a, like legally a top, like a, there's no discrimination in the society, but the what is the the, the culture? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the hidden the yes. dynamics. Yes, that's what in, the, so in, and the, the church make a uh, no. There's a legally most of churches yeah. are ordaining or uh, ordaining, but do not provide the opportunity the same way. Yeah. So that's a legal issue is going on the church structures. Yeah. Uh, and together with the mm -hmm. together with the culture. Mm -hmm. So church is it seems like a church is very uh, liberating 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 place because of the gospel, the, the message of gospel, but the structure or system mm -hmm. or the function going on is a little oppressive, especially women who do like to take the leaderships. Mm -hmm. It's a difficulties mm -hmm. going on. And I heard a lot of women's <laughs> leadership is what has been going through the difficulties in working with the Korean uh, church leaders mm -hmm. so, and congregation. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask about the, the average lay woman. Mm -hmm. Are they supportive of all of the women trying to move up in the hierarchy? Or are they um, of mixed opinion about what the system should be? I think, you know, it's a kind of complicated issue, but mm -hmm. you mean a church, at the church? Right. Yeah. The well, average woman in the congregation. I see, you can tell, there are so many women who are in training in the seminary. But at the church, they are not treated well. So you, and then what does it mean? Not only this is the structure itself, but also the women themselves, they are educated in a man-oriented society. Their mind is not easy to understand. Woman is teaching in the pulpit on Sundays, Sundays, Sunday services, mm -hmm. and there are, right now, there are some emerging leaders, women leaders, so they are, they are have a senior pastors, but that's only a couple of people, but most of the dominant, the population of ordained women pastors, they, don't, they are not treated well. And last week, in the graduation service, my friend said, like, uh, they are, especially they are kind of married women, and then the husband is a, uh, minister and they are all minister and then the husband is hired by the church but the church expect her to be served in service for free so buy one get one free yeah. so that's kind of a concept and a lot of women has a strong calling and passion as i described they are in the service voluntarily they are not paid and it can, they are cannot just with the church they have to get out of the church and create something else to continue ministry and calling. Mm -hmm. And ordinate, being ordained is one thing, mm -hmm. and being a successful leadership in the church is another thing. So they are both of everything is challenging. Mm -hmm. And women to be successful in a higher position in the church, that's very difficult. And it's a very painful process and it's hurting. So uh, now, we need to talk about we kind of helping. This is important because seventy percent of membership is women. Who's gonna take care of them? The women ministry can take care of them, right? So church need to acknowledge importance of women, the female leadership, to take care of the congregation. Any questions? Well, I have a couple comments uh, yeah. about this. <laughs> uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to spend uh, roughly 52, 54 in Korea. And not only in Korea, but to be a military policeman with a variety of duties. So I could travel around uh, both before the uh, truce was signed and after the truce was signed. And if I had heard someone say that Mama-san, if I can use the language of the time, uh, was put down by men, we would have had to leave, laugh. Because our experience was Mama-san is almost always ahead of Papa-san in getting something done. Now that may be normal in a lot of societies, 
where women are more concerned with their family and they'll do things which may be audacious in some ways. But then when I come home to the United States, I don't immediately have that much contact with the uh, Koreas. But here too, it seems like there are big matters which you would have to examine, you can't examine at all, but it seems like they have some significance in terms of making these judgments about women in Korea. And that is, in the United States, I began to realize, or at least I thought I was realizing, that Korean women were way ahead of the men in getting things done. The men were always reluctant to put themselves out because they didn't know English. The women we saw weren't afraid of that. They'd take a job any place where they could get a job, and they learned the English little by little. They would take it up. But men, and this isn't just Korean men, but this is men in general that I saw, they prefer to have the wife go out and get a job while they moan around saying, you know, the system is unfair. I was a PhD, or I was a doctor, or I was a mechanic or something, and I can't get a job. Mama-san, whether it's in the United States, Korea, or someplace else, my hypothesis is that women will be more audacious <laughs> to protect their children and their household. And if they have to play the game of being subservient, of walking behind the husband as they did in Japan for a long time, but now they don't do it anymore, see? <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> I meant that somewhat sarcastically. Now they don't do it anymore. They think they don't, they do it, they, they don't. I have some other questions about your analysis too, I don't want to take all the time, but I wonder if there aren't differences in different parts of Korea respecting the, uh, the way women work and the way the men work, especially in terms of analyzing it by the church. When I was in Korea, Presbyterianism was indeed important. I didn't quite realize how important it was until I left Korea and went to other parts of the world and I could see what Armstrong and that branch of Presbyterianism had done to the disablement of Presbyterians and Christianity in Asia in general. Not just Korea, but India, Pakistan, other places. Now I'm wondering if a good amount of this shouldn't be attributed historically to some of these very strong non-Korean Christian leaders who, when the Presbyterians sort of split up over certain things, caused the Koreans, as they did in India to a great extent, in Pakistan too, to go with the more conservative, if not reactionary, Presbyterians. Right. That, that may be too much of church history to get into, but I don't, I don't think it should be unexamined in some ways. So. I think you know, every um, religion, when they are settling down, kind of in the, in the country and their location, contextualization happens. So, Korea churches uh, contextualize Christianity. So, that means indigenous. Yeah, be, that, uh, the, when the uh, Christianity came to Korea, there are many channels has come, but um, that time was the Confucian, Confucianist, the principle is dominant as a social structure. Like uh, it's a ruling, ruling government. And it, you know, if you read my book, you know that you will figure out more understanding. So and then the Presbyterian way of approaching to Korean people is. It's really working because it provides the system, the structure, so and respect the the leaders, church leaders. So it's a, it was like a really in that way. So maybe they did not have a the Presbyterian missionaries did not have a plan to make Korea more conservative, but because of our already with the religion, our the peoples. The ideology is trained by the Confucianism, and it worked in that way. So, and I talked about the importance of the indigenous religion 
ahead before Christianity can, because Korean Christianity is different from American Christianity because of our culture, or the formal indigenous religions, and the social, social, you know, uh, a strain, <laughs> my English, so social a trend, you know. So it's different, but so maybe it will be helpful. But if you have more questions, you can read uh, through my book and then. Uh, and give me more comment after that, and that will help me to have a further research in the future for my next book. So <laughs> 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 sure, I think you're great, and I think this is a very well written book. And uh, we only have ten minutes before lunch, and so I hope a few of you will enter the book. Yeah, actually, I decided to uh, my charge in my book is twenty dollars. That means you are supporting for my future book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and thank you.